and praise. Come on, open up your mouth, people of God. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, from the front to the back. Open up your mouth. From the front to the back. From the front to the back. From the front to the back. Open up your mouth and give him praise today. Give him praise today. Yes, God. Give him praise today. Hallelujah. Come on, let the believers lift up their voice. Come on, let the blood wash, sanctified, spirit filled believers lift up their voice right now before the King of Kings. Lift up the voice right now before the Lord of Lords. Come on, don't get relaxed in this atmosphere. Come on, don't get relaxed in this atmosphere. Don't get relaxed in this atmosphere. Whoa! Yes. Hallelujah. As the praise team begins to make their way, I want to just share something with you real quickly. You see these palms. Individuals are, are waving. We have some more over here. Somebody just grab a couple of them. Grab them and just begin to wave. And I'll share the significance of the palm. As Jesus began to enter the city, enter the gate, the people met him at the gate, waving palms, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name. Hosanna, Hosanna. The significance of the palm is, at that time, the palm mean, it, the meaning is, a dying of the flesh and victory. So the people did not understand that they were literally prophesying the future of the Majesty. They didn't realize who he really was. There were some who believed that he was the promised one. There were some who believed that he was the king of kings, the one that was prophesied of all throughout the Old Testament. Some had a revelation, some did not. And they began to wave these palms. Jesus coming in, being reminded of his assignment, as the people met him, as he was riding on a donkey, yeah. the humble king riding not on a stallion, but a donkey. Oh, I can't hear nobody here yeah. today. Waving the palms, shouting Hosanna, which means the Messiah has come to die of his flesh yeah. and to give us victory. I can't hear nobody in here today. So as you are waving your palms today, I want you to be reminded of what he went through. For you, what he went through, the shedding of his blood for you. I can't hear nobody in today. I tell you to lift your more voice and say, Hosanna! 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 And as the praise team comes, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. As the praise team comes, as they saturate this place with his glory, as they saturate this place with the presence of the Lord, I need you to get involved today. I need you to get involved today. I can't hear nobody in here. Listen, I'm reminding that we constantly have to die to our flesh. I can't hear you today. Hey, we have to constantly die to our flesh. Lady Heidi and I literally just took us an eight hour drive from Louisiana all the way here today. We have not slept maybe but two hours, but I'm telling you, I am dying to my flesh right now. Come on, if I can drive eight hours, Leaving at 4 o'clock this morning after going to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning. I can't hear nobody in here. What excuse do you have? What excuse do you have to hold back your praise? To hold back your worship? Somebody lift up a shout!
few more seconds, a few more seconds. Don't depend on the next song. Release your sound. Come on. Thank you, Jesus.
took your place Dwell Dwell Move whatever's in your way Whatever took your place Lift the voices Dwell Permission to do it now. Give him permission to do it now. Say, move. Whatever's in your way. Whatever's in your way. With those hands lifted just for a moment. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, oh, oh, Lord, he got a da da, shot a da da ba. Oh, shift global is waiting, Lord. Kumbaya, shift global is waiting. Kumbaya, shift global is. Somebody need you, Lord. Come by. Lift it up. Somebody need you, Lord. Yeah, na 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 sha. Oh, somebody need you, Lord. Oh, go. Lift your voice and say, Oh. Move whatever is in your way. Every unhealthy relationship. Move whatever is in your way. Whatever took your place. No music. All to Jesus. Surrender all to him I freely give and I will ever love and trust him in his presence day. If you mean it, say it with me. I surrender.
as we prepare ourselves for the seed of the word open your hearts right now open up your hearts open up your hearts open up your heart just for a moment lift your hands before the king and say father feed me your sustaining word let your word grow in me let your word grow in me and let your word manifest in my life Ish, ha, ha. let your word manifest in my life ha, like never before change everything that's not like you change it change it change it change it let your word manifest hey god hey god hey god hey god hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the king, hallelujah to the king. Can you welcome this great man of God, Minister Stephen Palmer, as he comes to deliver the word today? And we're going to prepare ourselves after the sermon, after word, to receive Holy Communion. Amen. 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 Come on, clap your hands and let's celebrate the King of Kings. Yes, sir. Preach the word, sir. for a second you can keep playing today y'all shut the atmosphere so well it's soaking up here um, today is Palm Sunday now I love that our pastors hear from God because she gave the palms my last name's Palmer Palmer represents prosperity, beauty, humility, and favor. When they laid the palms down, that's what the Proverbs Psalm says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. It should be like the cedars of Lebanon. As a matter of fact, it says, even in their old age, they should still have sap, they will still have dew. What they mean, you still have anointing. And pastor was talking, I was talking about the palm leaves, and I was like, Lord, I don't have any palm leaves. He said, yes, you do. You have the palms of your hand. And he said in Isaiah 42, I, 49, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. He said, I have not forgotten you. I can't forget you. Like the wrinkles in my hand, you're there. You are part of me. So when Jesus went into Jerusalem, it was a manifestation of what was taking place in the heavenlies. He was literally surrendering all because he already knew what was going to take place. They saw the accoutrements. He saw the sacrifice. And he says, regardless, if I can stretch my palms wide, you can stretch your palms high. So we take a moment and just just thank God because who, who else is like you father who can set atmospheres who can change troubles who can take mess who can take darkness and out of it create marvelous light you can take trouble it caused triumph. Take our mess ups and use them as a solve, as a bomb that reminds us of your healing grace. Father, they're not here to me, see me. 
Thank you for entrusting me. Thank you for, for a, a papa and a mama who, who love you and who, who want to see the gifts flourish. Thank you, oh God, for setting the atmosphere for kumbaya, which means arise, God, rise. That's what it means. Arise, God, rise. Thank you for rising in our lives. Father, we don't want this just to be another day. Let this be the day our lives are transformed. Start with me. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. We lift our palms to you. Always having something to submit. Always having something to lay down. Whether it be our will, whether it be our desires, whether it be our own way, our own intuitions, our own ambitions. We lay it down at your feet. Open our hearts and our minds, Father, as Pastor just prayed, so that we all can receive from you. Your engrafted word that transforms us. We love you, we honor you, we thank you. In Jesus' name, have your way. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Um, I always give honor to our pastors. Um, I it's crazy because he was a brother, well, friend turned brother, and a brother turned pastor, and a pastor turned father. Likewise. So that's my spiritual parents. That's our spiritual parents over there. Um, so what you're getting today is a, a mix of both of them. <laughs> Not just because I'm light skinned. Uh, it's really because um, this week, I was telling Sister Shakita that yesterday I got attacked in my resting time. And um, I don't even know if the kids heard me or my wife heard me upstairs screaming out. She probably did hear me screaming, Jesus. I was trying to rest. We had a long week. And as I'm resting, I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what do you want to do? Just, Lord, I was like, just rest. As I'm resting, I could not move my body. And I literally saw... Like, it was like the demons, like hell was trying to pull me down. And I couldn't say, I couldn't say with my words, and it's not, that has not happened to me in many years. I couldn't say in my words, Jesus. I couldn't say it, which way you can hear me. So I'm saying it in my heart, and as I keep going down, down, I stop. And the Holy Spirit said, don't stop. So I said, saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus! And it broke. But I sat there and I said, that was fear that settled for a second. And I said, okay. I got it, Lord. The enemy will attack what is about to attack him. When he sees the weapons coming, he already knows. So he's going to shut it down any way that he can. Don't count it strange. When you find yourself in various trials and tribulations where it seems like nobody like you, don't run from it. Don't run from the development. When Pastor Lady Hyde said, you're preaching, I was like, I didn't want to preach. No, I got too much stuff I'm doing. But if they can sacrifice, how much more can I sacrifice? God has equipped us and today, this is a mature message. There's no milk in this. There's a little bit of milk in the ingredients that were made. But this hurts. And it's not ironic. She said we don't preach to faces, it's to hearts. Because God wants to transform it. And I'm tr telling you from experience and I'm telling you from my life right now, God is like, you're going higher. The reason the devil tried to bring you low, because he saw you going high. 
touch yourself, say, Lord, I'm ready. Make sure I'm willing. I know I'm able, but I'm ready. Ephesians 6, chapter 1, verses 1 through 13. It says this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as a Lord, as to the Lord, excuse me, and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. Verse 9. And you masters do the same things to them, giving up threatening knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. I'm talking today, our lesson, our playbook is sons, servants, soldiers. Sons, servants, soldiers. The great delusion that we have as a Christian as a believer and apparently it's in the western hemisphere is that everything is going to be easy that the Christian life is without struggle that is a lie from the pit of hell we think that because we pray for it, it should happen if we pray for it, if we quote scripture if we give affirmations if we tithe but it's really not tithing because tithing comes from the heart so it's paying our membership dues if we do this we will receive what God has for us. We'll be okay. We try to shun and try to hide from trouble, from struggle, from trials, from tribulation. And if things don't happen the way we think they should happen or the way we prayed for it, we give ourselves the cliche, well, it's not time for it. Oh, it's in God's timing. You know what? God has something better for you. What if that is the better that God has for you, but you got out of the struggle before it was time? See, the maturity of a believer is accepting the fact that no matter what I'm faced with, God is still in control. No matter what I go through, whatever I experience, there's still God. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. He's my inheritance. He's my grace. He's my strength. He's my righteousness. He's my joy. He's my peace. He is everything that I desire. Everything that I want is found in him. But if I do not learn how to mature, where I have to go through the buffeting, where I have to go through the trials, where I have to go through the attacks, I will be a nominal Christian. One that is ineffective, has no power, and sees no results. And it's sad because if you look at the church as a whole, based on age and the time frame as long as the church has been around, you have many people who have been sitting complacent and never reached the capacity in which God has for them. As a matter of fact, in, in Matthew 13, 20 through 21, I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. This is where I come like Mama Heidi. Because of the word, and for the word's sake, tribulation and persecution came. Again, and I love your faces right now. Because you have to understand, this is not a feel-good message. This is a clarion call. Get ready to fight. Accept your place. 
Matthew 13, 20 through, 20, 20 through 21. But he who received the seed, it's the, the parable of the sower and the seeds. Jesus explains it. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Woo! Yes, that's for me, Pastor. Yes! Yet, he has no root in himself. But he endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, because of the word, not because he was a good Christian, not because he was a pastor, not because they sang on the praise team, not because they worked in multimedia, no. Because of the word, trials and tribulation, trials and persecution came, immediately he stumbles. Mark 4, 17 said it this way. For the word's sake, tribulation came. Trouble came. Matthew 16, 21 through 23 gives another picture of this. And this is just the appetizer. It says, from the time Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, far be it, Lord. Like, hold on, wait a minute, Jesus. You're not going to die on my sake. No, not while I'm here. And the Lord says this to him. Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. Paint the picture here. This is right before Jesus is about to go into Jerusalem for Palm Sunday. And what's happening is, he says, who do people, who do men say that I am? And they begin to tell him. And then he says this, he says, who do you say I am? And Peter, look, you're the Christ, you're the son of God. And Jesus says, blessed are you, Bar Jonas, Simon Bar Jonas. Because on this rock I will build my church. As a matter of fact, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. He commends him. He says, on you. And then and this is the same scripture we like to quote. He said, this is the scripture right here. We say, look, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. But then he begins to tell him, I got to suffer. I got to die. I'm going to go through some trouble. And Peter's like, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. And Jesus rebukes him because he says, you are not mindful of what God is doing. You're only mindful of yourself, of men, your comfort. You're only mindful of what you're experiencing and not what God is doing. You're mindful of your comfort. There's no victory without struggle. There's no triumph without trials. There's no conquering without a conquest. Better yet, there's a special place for people who have no trouble. It's called the cemetery. They're dead. They're not alive. What we obtain too cheap, we often esteem too lightly. So if you get something without working for something, uh, you don't put your all into it. It's been said if you find a path with no obstacles, it probably leads to nowhere. And God is not a God who leads us to nowhere. We're going somewhere. And what I want to give to you today, I'm about to unpack this, is to ignore is the beginning of ignorance. You cannot ignore what God is doing. Or say, well, it's okay, well, I've been in church. You know, you've heard that voice. You gotta step up, you gotta do more. Lady Hottis preached a message in February, the fourth, as a matter of fact. It says, the lies they told you. We've been lied, we've been lied to thinking it don't take all that. Yes, it does. You're doing too much. No, you're not doing enough. We're expecting grand things, but we're not doing grand things. We have minuscule behaviors. We're settling and we have forgotten who we are. Our greatest need is not to be informed, but to be reminded that you are a son, that you are a servant, and you are a soldier. 
If I were to give you a resume, description of a Christian, of a believer, I would say, hey, let me tell you this. God loves you. God blesses you. He has but he has immense blessings and callings on your life. Things for you to do. Matter of fact, you can move mountains, but let me tell you the truth. Sometimes he will tell you to speak to the mountain and other times he'll tell you to climb it. Sometimes God will rescue you from the furnace and other times he'll put you inside the furnace. But either way, you gotta be willing to say, okay, God, whatever it is, I'm with you. This would be my stanza. This would be my introduction into introducing you to having a relationship with Jesus Christ. You're going to have clouds, you're going to have storms, you're going to have troubles, but don't think that God is looking at you and saying, I've forgotten you. I don't care about what you're doing. It is necessary. It is necessary. Look at your neighbor and say, it's necessary. It is necessary. This is necessary that you go through troubles. It's necessary. And let me tell you something. I told you before, God never wastes anything. So everything that God takes you through, trust and believe that he's growing you to something. God is not about destination. Because if, he, if he's about destination, he would not be omnipresent. He's anywhere and everywhere at the same time. God is not even about accumulation. You do not impress him with how much you have. Not even your skill, talent, and ability. What you worked on. Because God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the earth is the Lord, and the fullness there. God is about transformation. For us becoming who he's called for us to become. Because if we become who he's called for us to become, if we take our rightful place, if we understand our roles, we'll understand our responsibilities. As a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians says, the earth moans and groans, awaiting for the sons of God to take their rightful place. The earth is literally waiting for you to be who God has called you to be. And he never called you to sit in a pew to take notes and walk out the door without transforming your life. He's never called us to that. He's never called us to get as much information about him but never know him. He's never called for us to know about prayer, to know how to fast, to know how to speak and speak the blood of Jesus over people's life, to speak in tongues, but not utilize the power that we have. God has never called us to that, but we've called ourselves to it. Because comfort is easy. Remember I told you, obedience will often challenge what is common, comfortable, or convenient in your life. But obedience brings about opportunities. It brings about opulence. But trust and believe there will always be opposition. Because the enemy knows if you get it, he's done. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4, I'm going to get back to my notes in a minute. He's tempted. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted. What kind of oxymoron religion do we believe? You led me into trouble? You led me into a trial? You led me into a furnace? But it says this, Jesus encounters Satan. And what I love about this is that Jesus properly handles the attacks that come against him. So much so that the Bible says that Satan left him for a season. This is no runner when he got off the boat of Genesaret, and this is for my Bible scholars, when he stepped out the boat, the demons ran to him and said, what are you doing here? Well, are you here to torment us before our time? They were like, wait a minute, we, we left you alone. Why are you coming and mess with us? This is how, this is Jesus properly handled because he understood, I am a son, I'm here to serve and trust and believe. I got something I'm fighting for as a soldier. So, y'all ready to unpack this? Let's unpack this. The roles determine the responsibility. Whatever role God has given you, and he's given you three, they determine your responsibility. When you know your role, and what is supposed to be done, you're not easily distracted or misled or surprised when various trials come and take place in your life. Maturity does not come 
with age, it comes with acceptance of responsibility. I accept, okay, God, I am a believer. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm a son, that means I'm a servant, and that means I'm a soldier. Okay, what does that mean, Minister Stephen? It means this, that as a son, there is an authority to exercise and an inheritance to receive. As a servant, there are gifts to share and there's a work to be done. As a soldier, there is a mission to fight for and a power to use. And you are called all three. You can't separate them. You can't say, well, I do this role and I do that role. God says, well, no, you do that, you miss out on everything else. All things work together. I've, I know what I'm doing. I've called you to all and I've equipped you to all. And today, we're going to dismiss this disillusion. And you're going to accept your rightful place as a son, as a servant, and as a soldier. So that you can set the level that God has taken you to. To handle the things you're about to handle. To receive the things that God wants to place into your life. The contingencies of God's blessings are the understanding of his anointing. It's understanding who I am and whose I am and what God has placed in me. So let's unlock a son. A son, take your notes. A son. One. I'm just going to give you, because this is like a series. I can't give you everything. You got to go and study. Number one. Sons are given authority to act on God's behalf. Sons are given authority to act on God's behalf. When God created the earth, what he did was, Seven days he created the earth. Seven days he created, well, seven days he rested. Six days he created man. He did not come back and look at it. It's yours. Earth was created for man. Man was created for God. God says, you do what you need to do with it. I've already placed everything it needs to. I don't have to come in every single day. Okay, I got to fix this. I got to let these birds do this. No, no. You got it. It's yours. You manage it. He doesn't have to look at it anymore. He placed you there. No wonder stuff is happening on your job. And you're like, why is it happening? God is like, I placed you there. What you doing about it? Yeah. Well, all this stuff happening in my house. Why are these people doing this? Why are my kids acting like this? Well, I placed you there. Handle it. As a son, that means you carry the DNA of God. That means you have the authority of God. Matter of fact, hey, John, 1, John 1, 12 through 13. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right. The right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, you were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of the man, but of God. The right means authority. You have authority. That means authority comes with power. You have the authority. You can speak to the things in your life that are not right. You can make the adjustments. You can do that. That's your responsibility as a son. God has given that. But if you sit complacent and you abdicate that responsibility to somebody else, you become a son to somebody else. So here's the crazy thing about spiritual DNA. Spiritual DNA is not based on flesh. It's not like the flesh. Well, I can't separate who my dad is, who I love, my father to life. But spiritual DNA, you can tell who you are by what you do. And how you respond and not react to situations. You can tell, like people can tell, I would tell, one of my mentors, they would say, you look like one of your mentors when you're speaking. You do this, oh, who is that? Pastor Micah. I, I can't, you can't help it, it's in the DNA. So when God sees you, he's not looking at what your name is. Matter of fact, he's not even looking at how you're raised. He's looking at how you're made. Did you miss it? God is not looking at how you are raised. He's not looking at where you're from. He's looking at how you were made. You were made in his image. You have his DNA. But when you act out a sort, what you do is you contradict him so you automatically become the son of perdition. You become the son of the world. Because your actions create your DNA it creates and molds and shapes you to be who God has called you to be but if you're becoming something opposite you not do you really belong to Jesus no 
So God is like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're given authority. And here's the thing about authority. Authority is so powerful, so powerful that God gives you the choice. And we're not going to talk about it right now. But God gives you the choice to determine whether you're his or not. You get that choice every single day and every single moment. The next thing, number two. Remember, sons, there's an authority to exercise and an inheritance to receive. Number two, sons are made through Jesus Christ and become heirs to the promises of Abraham. Now listen to that part there. We're made through Jesus Christ. Galatians 3, 26 through 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, so you are son too, sister. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What this means is you have an inheritance, but you don't obtain that inheritance but through Christ. It's accepting Christ into your life and then allowing him to lead your life so that you can unlock the inheritance. It's like the biometric scan or my phone or I put, I put my face ID. Yes, I look like him, but if my actions not aligned up, I don't get to unlock what's in there. I don't get, if my DNA is not lined up, if I, my words, my thoughts, my actions, if those things are not, I, but, but, uh, not eh, wrong, it's not working. I need the right DNA. This is why Jesus had to come. Because what happened with the flesh, the flesh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Flesh, death automatically, sin automatically brought death. So the death was not just in the physical realm, it was in the spiritual realm, which were one and the same. And so God said, hey, wait a minute. So I, I, what I've done is because you've sinned, Adam, you have separated me from you. And there's no other way for me to reconcile unless there's blood. But here's the, here's the thing. It can't be your blood because your blood is tainted. It can't be you because, see, God was so intricate. When he made you, he already factored in the future. He already factored in the people you'll be connected to, your sons, your daughters, those you'll even be adopted into your family. He already factored those things in. So the choices that I make at this moment ultimately affect the choices and the things I do in the future. So God said, okay, I got, I got to make a contingency plan. Okay, I'll send Jesus, but he cannot come from a man. Whenever God wants to change the world, he uses a two-legged human being. Whenever God wants to change society and transform it, he uses a woman. Because she can carry the seed and mature the seed. Maturation, her body is made for that. So he used this woman by the name of Mary and she becomes impregnant with the Holy Spirit. And she had to nurture Jesus based on the words of God. Yes, Jesus was all-knowing, but trust and believe. How do you think Jesus was able to talk at 12 years old in the book of Luke to those Pharisees and those people there, and, and they're like astounded, like, how do you know all this? Well, his mama had to say, listen, baby, the book of Isaiah says you, <laughs> the government should be on your shoulders. Like, she had to speak these things into him. She had to cultivate. This was his food. She had to do these things. And so he's constantly hearing this because that's the only way that he could grow. How do spiritual things grow? Through spiritual food. And so he not only was man, not only was he man, but he was also God in the spirit. So he grew, he grew. He was a son of God. But also had the DNA of man. So that he could be the recompense. So that he could be the sacrifice to reconcile us back to God. God factored this in. And this is the beautiful thing about it. I will jump to this and say this. This is the beautiful thing about grace. When I've not gotten it right, when I repent, that means to stop, to turn. I should say turn around and go the right way. God's love expressed through his grace 
in mercy turns my bad choices into lessons that become blessings for myself and to others. This is what happens. And this is what Jesus did. He said, I came so that you could not take, I came to take what you could not have what you could not bear, what you could not do, I came to do it. So now through me, you are a son. You are accepted back. Now you have my DNA. It's factored in. And it's, as the scripture said, it's not through the flesh, but it's through the spirit. So sons, not only are they given authority and act on God's behalf, not only are they made through Christ Jesus, and heirs of Abraham's promise. And see, we don't even have the time to talk about Abraham's promise. He said, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. That basically means everywhere your foot treads is yours. It ties in together because you have authority and you have a promise. The promise is this. Adam, you know this. I mean, um, uh, Michael, you know this. A promissory note. It's a promise to pay. Basically, it's a guarantee. But I'm not just taking anybody's guarantee. I'm taking the one who created the earth. Yeah the globe, who put everything into existence, who holds the stars and the moons in place. I'm talking about him. So I can back that up because God says, I search for my word to perform it. I'm not a man that I should lie because if he need to, he created. it. He doesn't have to compete. He creates. Nod your head if you're still with me. Say, Lord, I'm a son. Make me a son. Number three, sons are led by the Holy Spirit. Sons are led by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 14 through 16. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. What does this say? God says, look, if you're mine, you will listen to what I say. The first thing in Ephesians 6, children, obey your who? God is our father. Obey your parents. In the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, so it will be well with you. This is the first commandment with promise. He says, listen, I'm telling you how to do this. Obey. Obey. When the Holy Spirit tells you to go, go. When it tells you to do, do. Attend your ear to him. Learn his voice if you don't know it. We'll pray for the discernment of the Holy Spirit to come upon you. Not just upon you, but in you. Acts 17, 28, in him we live, move, and have our being. So you'll know what to do. I can't tell you how many times in business deals and in interactions, I'll pray, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? And he gives, he drops the answer. He drops it, he makes it clear, he makes it plain. It's right there in my face. And he's not just for church services. He's for every part of your life. Relationships, work school, ministry, business, any type of dealings, in exercising. Oh, Lord, I can't make this. Listen, that last rep about to get on my nerves, but come on, come on, come on, God. That's too much. No, it's not. It's acknowledging that he's always there and he's a very present help in a time of need. Why are you wasting your help? Matthew 28, 18. Jesus says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority. So the question I have to ask, how much authority or how much power does Satan have? If all has been given to Jesus, how much do he have? None. None. He's tricked us to believe that he does. And the reason I said that because unrecognized authority is not authority at all. If you're sitting there and you don't realize, wait, 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 I can actually do something about this? It reminds me of the story of the prodigal son in, in Luke chapter 15, 14 through 19. The prodigal son, he, spent, he asks his father for inheritance. He spends that inheritance. He has no more money. He attaches himself to somebody in this city. And he goes and feeds the swine, the pigs. Now, if you're a Jew, that's a big thing. 
Because to, to mess with pigs means you live in sin. You're filth. Because it was considered a dirty animal. And in his mind, he looked at the food because he was so hungry. And he says, listen, man, I'll eat what they got. But then it said he came to himself. Wait a minute. Even the servants in my father's house have more than enough to eat. If I just go back to my father and be a servant, I'll still be good. He had to come to the realization and say, wait a minute, wait, 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 why am I still in this funk? Why am I still in this place? Why am I still complacent? Why have I not still seen the prayers answered in my life? Why am I still here with my father who owns heaven and earth has given me the authority to speak to situations, to do things, to change what I'm in and what I'm going through? Why am I still going through this? The Bible said he came to himself. Lord, let us come to ourselves when we find ourselves in situations and circumstances that we don't even have to be in. God has not called us to that. You are a son. But it's interesting, he said, I'll go back and be a servant. Servants. Not only a son, but you are a servant as well. Servants, a servant, there are gifts to share and there's work to be done. Three things about a servant. Again, I don't have all day. One, servants choose who they will serve. They choose. You got a choice. Joshua 24, 15. This is, the, the, this is what started this whole thing. Last Sunday, Holy Spirit woke me up. He said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. I was like, what you mean, Lord? What? And I, he just began to expound on this. It says in Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, when I read this, you have to look at this. I looked at this scripture and I said, Okay, I have a choice, God, but I don't have a choice if I'm a server or not. Every person has to serve. The question is, who are you serving? Everybody has to serve. Like, so I, I got to choose, like, wait a minute. So I, I get to choose who I serve, but the thing is, I was made to serve. You were made to serve. It's the inevitable, <laughs> this inevitable means that you cannot serve two masters. You heard it, Matthew. Jesus says, you cannot serve God and manna. Either you'll hate one, you'll be loyal to the other, or vice versa. you got to choose. And here's the thing. If you choose not to serve God, you inevitably serve the sons of the world. You, you serve Satan. Jesus told the Pharisees, you are like your fathers, or like your father, Satan, a liar. There's no truth in him. So that's why you can't hear, because when I speak truth, you can't recognize it because you are a liar. Because you are of your father. Their actions, again, DNA, I determine if you're a son by what you do. How you act. Your necessities. What's your priorities? And for them, their priorities, well, I'm good. I'm a believer. Really? You're religious, but you have no relationship. Yeah, you got it together. You can tell me what to do, when to clap my hands. We can tell me everything about the law. But can you tell me the, about the love of Jesus Christ? Can you recognize God in your face? And apparently you have not. In the book of Matthew, I believe it's chapter 7, he says, later on, he says, he says this to the Pharisees, your traditions have hindered you from seeing God. You know your traditions better than you know the tradition maker. The one who made the traditions about why this all exists. And as servants, we're looking at our life. And sometimes it's like, I, I, I got to serve? I think we missed the picture. When it talks about service, when it says to serve, what it means is you obey, you give of what you have. In layman's term, your time, your energy, your efforts, your talents, or your time, your talents, and your treasures. You give those things in order to fulfill whatever the mission is. Whatever the cause is, 
You give of those things. You give your time to it. You give your energy to it. You give your talents to it. And you, what it makes me, you attach yourself to that person or that entity or that thing. And whatever you find yourself doing, that is always on your mind. They are always on your mind. They're always what you're thinking about. You're wondering, okay, God, are you okay with this? You good with this? Whomever or whatever you serve, you yield your authority to. In essence, you give up your sonship to the thing or the person that you serve. You give your authority to it. In other words, this is what Satan tricked us out of it. Adam and Eve, when they sin, they end up giving their sonship to Satan. They gave their authority of the world to Satan. But Jesus got it back. He got it back. But Satan has been walking around with a false deed. It's fake. But well, remember, it's mine. No, it's not. It got taken. It got, it got, he brought it back into the rightful hands. He gave it back to us. We have to be careful because our secret idol is often comfort and physical well-being. We serve our feelings and our emotions when we choose not to serve God. Because I don't feel like it, God. Well, that, that's not God. Well, why would God let this happen? So we stop pursuing the things that God is having us. Just when a door gets closed, somebody says no, we're like, okay, it ain't God. Excuse you? Last time I checked, when, when Moses asked Pharaoh, let my people go, he said, no. How many times did he have to go back to Pharaoh? But God said, You're gonna, I'm going to release these people every time he came back. And guess what? Every time God did a sign. It doesn't mean you get tired, you don't get tired in the midst of it. Service, you're going to get tired in serving. Let me be real with you. You're going to get tired in serving. But most of the time we get tired in serving is because we take our mind off of who we're serving instead of... <laughs> we take our mind off of who we're serving. And we start putting our mind on what we're doing. I had one young lady, she said, I want to be used by God. And I said, I pray. I said, I pray for you. Be careful what you're asking for. You know this lady. Because she's a singer. And so I prayed for her, and a couple of weeks later, man, I feel like they're just using me. They're calling me every week, and I got to just come in. I got to go to rehearsal. I got to practice. I said, hold on. You ask God to be used. What do you think they're doing? They're using you. And I'm not, I'm not, this is not a cliche. It's not a play on words. Now listen, when God says he's going to use you, yes, you were doing, when you do it in your own strength, you're going to have your own fallout. It's a natural fallout. You're going to get burned out. The difference between burned out and lit up is burned out is when I put my own efforts, I put my own energy, and I don't listen and heed the voice of God when he tells me to go, how he tells me to go, and where he tells me to go. When I get lit up, it means set on fire for God. That means I don't care how much I have to go through. I might drive eight hours just to get back, but, but somehow I got some energy. Somehow I got this power to keep going, to keep moving, to keep pressing. And this is where God turns the heat up in me. The flesh is willing. The spirit, excuse me, the, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Like the, the, Yeah, I want to do it. But service, you got to understand something. Here's the thing about service. We serve God, but we don't please people. There's a difference. We don't, see, one of the hardest things, I told you all the story, Pastor Mike and Lady Heidi, where I was asked to pastor this church. And it bothers me sometimes still, but I had to let it go. And the Holy Spirit told me, this is a, a growing prominent church on the belt line. And the Holy Spirit said, hey, they're going to ask you. This is before I came. They called me to come preach there one day. And I, I, this was years ago. I'm not leaving shift. Don't think y'all, I'm not leaving. I'm looking at it. Wait a minute. No. You're being obedient. <laughs> so I, I'm there. I was called. The, the Lord told me. They asked me to come preach. And the Lord told me before I went. He said, listen, they're going to ask you to pastor that church. 
And he told me about the past. Like, I began to see where the pastor was going through dementia. Her family was going through stuff. They were trying to restructure and rebuild. They were in a prominent area. And listen, they, if you know real estate, they were in the middle of the belt line. Like, that church should not have been there. So they had people knocking on their door offering millions of dollars just to get this place. And I was like, man, we could do so much for this. And the Holy Spirit said, you will not pastor the church. I said, okay. So then I, I go there, exactly what they said. Mr. Uh, Steve, can you, can you come and sit with us in the office for a second? They, got a, they were old school. They had a little board. So the board came and met with me. And it was like, listen, we really want you to pastor this church. And I said, well, give me a second. I need to pray about it. So I, I, I didn't answer right there. Here's a hint for you. You don't have to answer when they want you to answer. Okay? Part of service. I got a point here. So I, I, they called me and I, I prayed about it. And the Holy Spirit said, you can interim but you cannot pastor that church. So for about a month and a half, I, I, I was literally the interim pastor, helping to build and establish what they needed to do, setting things in order. It was growing, it was thriving. It was like, okay, woo, yeah, we're going. And then it got to a point, it was like, all right, Pastor Steve, are you gonna be our pastor? We had, they called a special board meeting. And I remember that special board meeting because they literally begged. They said, what is it? Do we got to give you money? Do you have to do this? Do you have to do this? And I said, no, no, I can't do it. They're like, why can't you do it? And they begged and begged. And finally, I said, do you believe I hear from God? Everybody got silent. Yes, we do. And with tears in my eyes, I said, God said, I cannot pass you. And it hurt because I saw the hunger and then the Holy Spirit had to check me you're called a servant not a savior and I said okay he said do you not think that I will set somebody up to come and take care of my church don't think that you and he had to check me and I said whoa okay I said okay God I got you I got you I got you he says and and from that day forward, I live by this tantra. I am not moved by needs. I'm moved by God's voice. Whatever his word says, just because there's a need doesn't mean I'm going to go do it. Jesus, there was many who were sick. There were many who were demon possessed, but he didn't heal all of them. And with service, you have to understand this. This is why you got to be led by the Holy Spirit as a son. They follow the Holy Spirit. Like, hey, I'm not here to please people. I'm here to obey God. Servants look to please God and not man. Colossians 3, 22 through 24. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. We have to understand that do not allow the needs of this word, world and the worries, even in Christian settings, to cause you to move when God said, don't move. I could tell you stories from days. Ask me during Bible study. I'll tell you about the prophet who got eaten up. Excuse me, got killed by a lion. Because another prophet told him, the Lord said, you're supposed to come to my house. He didn't listen. He got to hear. Discernment is key. And as servants, you've got to, you've got to hear. And the reason you've got to hear, because especially those who are multi-talented, you'll end up pouring out these giftings, and what happens is they get wasted. And on that day when we stand in judgment, God is not going to only ask you about what you did, but he's going to ask you, what did you do with the talents that I gave you? Did, what did you do? Did you multiply this talent? Or did you just waste it? Did you just throw it out there for anybody? This is why we've got to be very careful when we are saying, I'm doing this for God. Well, you're doing it for God, but did God tell you to do it? Did God really tell you to do it? And I know. Listen, this is even when you come into to an alignment and you come into agreement with what God's word says, it's, that's what you follow and nothing else. I told a buddy of mine the other day, they were like, well, hey, I'm supposed to be over here. God has called me here. And, and, and you know, I, I don't know what God wants me to do. I said, what do you mean you don't know what God wants you to do? 
He told you to go there and serve, right? Yeah, but, but what capacity? Because, I, you know, I just feel like I don't have what it takes to serve. Okay, you, you're asking the wrong questions. You need to ask God, what is it that I need to do? But you're about to get up and leave because you feel that you're inadequate to do what God has asked you to do. When God asks you to do, trust and believe he's already placed in you what you need in order to do it. That's a mouthful, but trust and believe. You can go watch the video and you can see it later. I had to make your face smile for a second. I'm getting used to that music playing while we do it. Usually you know I don't like the music playing. But it does make me hurry up. So here we go. Here we go. Okay. Service please God not man. That's number two. Um, <clears throat> for number three about servants. Let me give you this. Number three. Servants know that promotions come through service. Let me say that again. Servants know that promotion comes through service. You don't get promotion by sitting there, lifting your hands, clapping, tapping your toes. No, you get service. You get promoted into the kingdom of God because you are willing to serve. You're willing to use the skills, talents, and abilities that God has given you in the time and in the place with the people he's called you to do. Okay, here's the scripture, Matthew 25, 23, the story of talents. And it says this, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Because he was faithful, he served where he was. See, a lot of people like to usurp. They like to jump ahead. All right, look, I've been, look, I've been serving all my life. I've been in church all my life. Well, the devil go to church too. What you mean you've been going to church all your life? What, where's your fruit? Where's the fruit? And now, now let me tell you this. Remember, God is not about accumulation. He's about transformation. And the fruit, when we talk about the fruit, it's first, how has your behavior changed? Not only that, but how have you impacted the other people's life when God's called you to serve? Even when it was uncomfortable, did you say, okay, pastor, you know what? I'm still going to do it. I don't feel like fruiting, but okay, I'm right here. Because I know God has called me to do what you've, called me, what you've asked me to do. It's being obedient, even in the midst of my discomfort, even in the midst of my dislike of other people. And it's like, yo, wait a minute. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, God. Boom. I'm willing to serve. And get this. Here, here's the really, you want exponential growth? Start serving people who don't like you. Start serving people. Who, I can't tell you how many times I've actually served people that I'm like, okay. Like, literally, I remember, they know this story. I was, I was, I was. I got accused of doing something that I didn't do. And I was like, what? I had family shun me, and I had certain people in ministry shun me. And I got set down. And I was like, wait a minute. So the Holy Spirit says to me, he says, okay, during praise and worship, you need to be standing up front. Excuse me, God? In the middle of the church? Like, I'm not, I'm not one of the dancers, and the dancers dance on stage, but you're asking me to come to the altar and stand on front. He says, yes, because the altar is a place of exchange, and I want you to exchange all that pride, everything else that you have, so I can elevate you. I want them to see that you can still praise me even if you're accused for something you didn't do. Now, to be told, I didn't learn that until hindsight, after the fact I went through it. I'm being real with you. I didn't learn it at that time because I was standing up there crying, feeling stupid, raising my hands and praising God, looking at the very people who accused me. And then when the truth came out, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. But you know what it did? It transformed that place. Because now everybody comes down and dance at the front. They're not ashamed to dance. They're not ashamed to praise God in front of other people. Yeah, it may be a large church. But they're like, no, I'm, this is my relationship with God. God will use your troubles to unlock doors and opportunities for other people just as much as he will use them to unlock opportunities for your life. He's trying to take you to the next level. And when he takes you as a leader, when he's equipped you as a servant, when he says the greatest among you is the servant, the reason it is because you have access to go in between heaven and earth. Think about that. The servant is the one that could go in the kitchen. The servant didn't do the cooking. 
but it knows how to receive what they have in the kitchen to bring it to what is at the table. In other words, the servant is a conduit. It's a liaison between heaven and earth, between God and man, between heaven, what they're doing up here, he helps to bring it down here. That is why the servant is the greatest, because God says, I can trust you to come back into the kitchen. I can trust you to go behind the veil and see how things are made. And you take this and then you take it out here and you present it to people who need it. And then you come back and you do it again. The servant has access to places, to realms, and to God that most people do not have access to. This is why God says, you are a son, you are a servant. And finally, you're a soldier. Now, I wish, let me tell you something. I can hold a note, don't, don't get me wrong. But if you compare it, don't tell me to sing. Uh, <laughs> listen, this is the part I wanted to say, I'm a soldier. And that's what I wanted to sing. But I'm not going to do that for the sake of time. We're going to finish this. Okay. <laughs> no, soldiers. This means there is a mission to fight for and there's a power to use. As a soldier, there's a mission. Soldiers know, this is number one, soldiers know there is always a fight. There's always a fight. A peer point blank. You're always fighting. Matthew eleven seventeen. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. There's always a fight. Anything worth having is worth fighting for. Anything. Whatever it is. If it's worth having, you're worth fighting for it. You're worth going after it. You're worth doing what needs to be done. Soldiers, number two, they know how to fight. You see Ephesians 6, our, our base scripture, eleven thirteen. Put on the whole armor of God. That's how you fight. You put on the whole armor, not just one piece. You put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, your loins gird with truth, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You take the shield of faith and the sword of the spear. Why? Wow, all these parts are integral. All of them are important. You've got to use it. And when we fight, we're going to probably work on this, and I'm, I'll bring this up in Bible study on Wednesday. There's a way, there's a strategy in how to fight. There's a way to fight. You know how to fight. You use those tools that God has given you, but you know how to. I don't fight with my fists. I fight with my prayers. I don't fight by writing letters or, or putting posts on social media. No. I fight by strategically going into places and being obedient to what God has sent me to do. Obedience unlocks doors. And it's a part of the war. When I obey, because again, choose with you. With you. Choose this day who you serve. Whether I'm going to go to the left or whether I'm going to go to the right. And whichever way I go determines which way the battle goes for the day. Yes, the war is already won. But we still have to fight the battles. We still have to. Every single day, you still have to fight to do what's right. Every single day, you still have to make the choice whether I'm going to follow Christ, whether I'm going to go after the dream, the goal, the aspiration, the things that God has asked me to do, Tiffany, whether I'm going to do those things or not. Yes, I get tired. Yes, I get hungry. Yes, these people get on my last nerves. However, however, I'm willing to obey God. I'll sit on my hands. I'll hold my peace. Whatever I have to do. Whatever I have to do. I'm going to fight the way you tell me to fight. Because when we fight, when we fight carnal things with carnal things, you only get carnal results. But when you fight with spirits, carnal things with spiritual things, what happens is it shifts the spiritual world so the carnal world has to line up. It has to. Remember Hebrews, we've been talking about faith. 
Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. We know that the worlds were formed, were created, were brought into existence by the things that were unseen. God is so strategic. He's so, I mean, just so suave and debonair and so, he's just so immaculate and awesome. He doesn't have to show anybody what he's doing. This is why he was like, look, when you're fasting, don't go tell nobody you're fasting. Don't be like the Pharisees. Yes, I am fasting. I am. Hallelujah. Did you feel that? No, I didn't. I did not feel that. I don't know what you're feeling, girl, but you need to go sit down. I had a lady one day, she told me at work, not, not, she was like, well, I just went to go witness to him. I said, please stop witnessing because you are, you, you are a bad example of a Christian. You're not doing us a good thing. I said, if you have to go and proclaim it, you have to go announce yourself, that's a problem. I said, let me tell you something. You know how many people come to me privately, including the director himself, come to me and say, hey, Stephen, can you pray with me? You'll never know that. Why? Because it's not for display. When I'm doing the things of God, he will get the glory and the light will be revealed. I don't have to go out there. No. See, you show the enemy your hand. You don't need to show him that. Because what they're going to do is, oh, 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 she professed it? Good. Okay. I'm a Christian. Knock her down. Knock her down. Come after her. The enemy is going to fight you hard because you have something that will destroy the works of the devil. You have something that would destroy the kingdom of darkness. Whether it's your gift, whether it's the obedience that God has told you to do, the things he's told you to do. God has given you and equipped you. Remember I've told you, he made you on purpose, for purpose, with purpose. The world is waiting for you to get into place. When you get into place, they can't come and take your territory. He'll go everywhere else, even on the outskirts, but he can't come in here. Why? It's fortified. We know how to fight. We already fought you from last week, so you know not to come back over here. He'll try to knock on the door and try to be subtle, but we've already, look, we're not ignorant of your devices because we're not ignoring you. We see, okay, no, get rid of them. Go ahead and drop the bomb. Boom. Next. You got to fight as a soldier. Soldiers, number three, know the fight is necessary. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. The only thing that grows in the comfort zone is mediocrity. The only thing. As servants, as soldiers, you have two things in common. You have a command and you have a choice. The question is, are you willing to obey the command? Will you make that choice to obey the command? Everybody on your feet. Um, let's flow. We got a heavenly language, we can speak in that language. I'm about to pass it over. Father, I thank you for dusting off the armor of your soldiers. For those who've set down their swords, who've taken off their helmets, who remove the weapons that they use for war. I pray, Lord, that you will give them a fervence. You will give them a, a desire and a passion to go after the enemy with everything they got. I pray that the enemy has no place, has no hold, has no legal right in their lives at all. We pray right now, Father, that those, even those who may not have fathers, that you will show them, Lord, that you've always been their father. That you have never left them. You've never forsaken them. That you've been right there the whole time. Willing and able and continually giving your life. Like the prodigal son. Your arms wide open. Looking and ready to receive them. For those who are serving father. Help them to hear you. To serve where you've called them. When you've called them. And to whom you've called them to serve them. Let them not taint it 
with their desires or even with the use of their skills and talents. Holy Spirit, we ask you right now to remove everything that has caused disillusions, that caused us to think that this life is just a membership card, a get out of hell free card when we accept you. Forgive us for limiting you and not allowing you to be Lord, to be Savior, to be guide, to be God of our life. We love you. We honor you. We know that you are doing mighty and great things. Continue to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's get this one. Minister Stephen, uh, come on. The word is so pure. The word is so potent. The word of God is so strong. The word of God is life changing. Amen. How many of you were changed today? How many of you were challenged today? Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Sons, servants, and soldiers. You can't separate them. You have to become all these. Amen. Oh, man. Oh, man. As you were standing there, I, when you first got up, I just saw the glory of the Lord all over you. I just saw the glory of the Lord all over you. And again, God just began to give me a picture of your future where he's getting ready to take you. Many say that the sky is a limit, but no, 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 the sky is too low. It's too low. It's too low where God is going to take you, your elevation, 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 elevation. There is such a wisdom and, a, and, a, and, and a, a, an anointing to articulate uh, the word of God, to rightly divide the word of God. Wisdom and insight and revelation will pour upon your life like never before. Hallelujah. And we pray now that everything that you've poured out, that God will replenish seven times. Hallelujah. What you have put out, what you have poured out of your heart and out of your spirit today, that you will be rejuvenated. And that the anointing of the Lord will give you another jolt of fire in your belly and in your household. And we give God praise for this great servant of the Lord. Come on, clap your hands again. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I don't want to assume that everyone in this room knows the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we want to take this time to pray over you if you need healing in your body if you will come quickly healing if you need um, um, breakthrough uh, deliverance I need you to come quickly come quickly I know the time is far spent come on move quickly move quickly move quickly family members I, I father give it back to me that was a name that was coming to me as I was sitting there um, and I don't know if this person is here or um, there's someone here who is, knows a Kendrick a Kendrick it could be someone streaming online but there's someone by the name of Kendrick that God wanted me to pray for this gentleman Kendrick there's some sickness, illness in the body um I'm seeing liver issues. Something dealing with the liver is not functioning properly. Hallelujah. 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 They could be streaming. They could be streaming. They could be streaming. In the name of Jesus, Kendrick, if you are watching, if you are watching, we speak to your body now. We speak to your body now. We speak to your body now. 
we speak to your body now and I command every organ to function properly in the name of Jesus that your blood will be purified ah in the name of Jesus oh God perform a miracle in his body now in the name of Jesus we're my prayer warriors perform a miracle right now and in his body oh God in the name of Jesus move wherever he is whether he's lying in the hospital in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus by his stripes by the blood of Jesus you are made whole you are made whole now hey you are made whole right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and and your mother's name is Barbara 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 hold up in the name of Jesus healing in your body ha in the name of Jesus healing in your body now in the name of Jesus hallelujah I've been praying for your father I've been praying for your dad hallelujah and I asked the Lord I said father bring him bring him to a place of brokenness let him come to you Jesus let his father come to you and change his life I've been praying for your daddy and my prayer is that father as long as he changes his heart toward you release him from where he is hallelujah in the name of Jesus and I speak to your father I speak to your father right where he is right now where he's sitting whatever he's doing right now that the Holy Spirit will arrest him that the Holy Ghost would arrest him that the Holy Ghost would arrest him that the prayers of his son his son his son has been interceding for him ha, daily that his boy has been praying for him and interceding for him in the name of Jesus hey, God let your will be done let your will be done in his life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus have you been having more breathing issues asthma in the name of Jesus lift your hands real quick give me this oil I come against the spirit of infirmity I come against the spirit of infirmity I come against the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. Hayeshata. I command the lungs to expand. No more restriction of the lungs. In the name of Jesus. Any allergies. Any allergies. That will, that will restrict his breathing. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I plead the blood of Jesus over your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Ha! From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I said, be made whole. I say, be made whole. Loose your hold, Satan. Loose your hold off of his body. Loose your hold off his body in the name of Jesus. And I give you praise, O oh God, for complete healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, clap your hands in this place and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else, you would need prayer for a family member. For a family member. You want to stay in the gap. For your come, please. Please come. Who is Rebecca? Rebecca you know a Rebecca Who? your first cousin's wife okay there's something going on I'm, I started feeling a pain here on my right side in my back and down my leg in the name of Jesus almost, almost like a paralyzing 
numbness hit my body just that quick. Rebecca, wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As the apostles stand in the gap. In the name of Jesus. Be made whole. Okay, it's loosened up now. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, Rebecca, you are healed now in Jesus' name. Bring her to a deeper place, a relationship with you, O oh God. Let her encounter you and experience you in ways she's never known before. Hallelujah. Tim, Timothy, Tim. Tim, Timothy. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's you? Your dad? Come. What's going on with his health? Halaba Lele Kiando. Shata Dada Sheko Satadaba. I come against diabetes. What's going on with your dad? Knees? Amputated? Diabetic? Have they scheduled the surgery? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any rottening, any rottening in his body. The blood of Jesus. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost run through Timothy's body. Ha God. Ha God. Oh God. You gave him the activities of his limbs. I speak wholeness. Purify him, God. Purify him, oh God. Purify him, oh God. Purify him, oh God. Purify his body, oh God. The bloodstream. I speak to diabetes and I command it to dry up in the name of Jesus. And it will not be your portion. I don't care what's in the bloodline, it stops right here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be made whole, man of God. Your father be made whole. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus. Be made whole. Be made whole. Be made whole. Be made whole. As soon as you see him, lay hands on him. I don't know when that's going to be. Rub your hands together. You're going to see him anytime soon. All right. Lay your hands on him. Lay hands on him. Lady Heidi, put your hands right here. You're going to get a double dose. In the name of Jesus. What you have put in us, we make a transfer right now. And by faith, do not waver. Do not waver. Do not waver. Do not waver. Trust and believe. Trust and believe that your father will be made whole in the name of Jesus. Come out and celebrate the King of Kings. What's going on? Okay, I come against mental illness and your niece. Lift your hands real quick. And you're going to have to go and touch her. Lay hands on her. Pour a little bit on her hand. In the name of Jesus. Rub your hands together. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We empower you. In the name of Jesus. 
I break the spirit of suicide. Who is Jessica? Is that her name? You've been praying for your friend named Jessica. In the name of Jesus. Take hold of Jessica's mind. In the name of Jesus. Your prayers will not go unanswered. Every demonic attachment that is wrapped around her mind. God, sever every relationship that is pulling her in the wrong direction. In the name of Jesus, drug addiction, alcoholism. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of perversion. In the name of Jesus, break it! In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of suicide and death. In the name of Jesus, she shall live and not die. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a third person, co worker, your husband. In the name of Jesus, he's having back issues. He's been having all of his life. All of his life, back issues, okay. I felt a little pull in my back. Y'all, this is just how God deals with me. Whatever God wants me to pray for, he'll let me feel it in my body so I'll know what to pray for. Bring him to a place of wholeness. That was some form of accident or fall that caused this. I feel the Holy Ghost. What happened to him? The blood of Jesus prevails. What's his name? Michael. The blood of Jesus prevails over Michael's body. God, bring Michael into this place so that he can receive from you. No more running, Michael. Ada, shada. Jesus is calling you. <laughs> in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we speak right now we speak right now another level in his life another level in his life another level in his life in the name of Jesus we give you praise hallelujah clap your hands in this place what's going on The oldest girl having a really hard time. The enemies have, there is a darkness that is upon her. I see her almost like dressed in gothic. Am I on the right track here? She tried to kill She's trying to kill herself. She's tried how many times? multiple times I saw three in the name of Jesus what is her name Elizabeth Elizabeth who is Sarah you're Sarah your spiritual okay and you, and they call you Sarah. People call you Sarah. Okay. All right. I'm here. I'm here. In the name of Jesus, I speak to Elizabeth. Every influence in her life that has caused her to detour and stray away from the purpose and the plan of God I snatch her mind back into alignment. The power.
power of the Holy Ghost arrest this girl now Elizabeth come forth 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 you shall live and not die you shall not take your life you shall live and not die Jesus meet her where she is in the name of Jesus the broken heart the pain of the loneliness the rejection that she's experienced on her past that has taken her down this path oh God in the name of Jesus we speak deliverance now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus be made whole be made whole for the kingdom suffering violence and the violent taken by force we take her back now by force we take her back now hey by force we take her back now by force we take her back right now right now in the name of Jesus I break every stronghold 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 in the name of Jesus 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 for the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty Oh, through God, through the pulling down of every stronghold. Pour down every stronghold in the name of Jesus. And lift the spirit of heaviness off the mother. Lift up the spirit of heaviness. Lift the spirit of heaviness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You have to create an atmosphere of worship in your house. Don't let all that other stuff play in your house. I don't care how angry she gets. Change her atmosphere. You can change her life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I give you praise. Let's celebrate the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Come. Come. What's going on here? Your dad. Is he battling with cancer? What's going on? Memory loss? Some blood clots going on in his... Who in your life is, is battling cancer? Someone is. I'm hearing it. It will be revealed. Put some oil in her hands. In the name of Jesus, rub your hands together. God's going to use you to lay hands. Put your hands together again. In the name of Jesus, Lady Heidi, grab me. In the name of Jesus, I speak to Alzheimer's, dementia, every blood clot in his brain. Miraculously thin out his blood. Remove every blood clot. In the name of Jesus. Ah. And whatever medication that he's taking that's causing this issue, God, expose it. Expose it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for complete restoration, transformation, and healing, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Whatever he's dealing with, he's going to be healed. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord real quickly. Let's receive the Lord's Supper. Please come. Please come. Musicians, thank you so much. I'm sorry.
let's stand. Um, everybody have your articles, please. I'm sorry. Ushers, please lead everyone row by row, and then you will come and get one. Come on, ushers, lead them one by one. Start from the back. Start from the back. Yes. This side too, you on this side. Yes. Because you are holy and you live within us, we can be holy. Bless this. Keep us and use us for your glory. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11 and 23. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Everyone, let's receive the blood. Thank you for the blood. Oh, the blood. That gives me strength. Strength from day to day. It will never be. Oh, his power. 
time it reaches last time everybody it reaches thing we want to do is just open up the doors of the church. If anyone want to become a member of this body, you are welcome. <laughs> you don't have a church home. You need a church home. If you don't have a covering yet, you need a covering. Hallelujah. We are here for you. We are here for you. We love you unconditionally. Amen. And it would be an honor. Kendrick was Jared's dad, but one of his friends, that's why he left. To, oh. Wow. <laughs> I have my hearing aid on today. I just, <laughs> it's, listen, we prophesy by faith. And it's, it, it's, it makes me nervous. When people don't say, that's me, I'll be like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> but it's so good to know that I heard the Lord. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. But well, we are done. Um, let's, I'm sorry. Let's worship the Lord in giving. Y'all know, Pastor, I will run out of here in a minute. <laughs> but, <laughs> tithers, come on, let's tithe. Givers, let's sow seed into the house of the Lord. Um, amen. Let's give unto the Lord. Amen. Let's worship the Lord in giving. This is a part of worship. This is worship. This is worship. And we give, we worship the Lord in giving by faith amen the scripture tells us um, dealing with Cain and Abel that Abel gift his sacrifice so that his worship was received above his brothers because his was wrapped in faith by faith he offered the Lord his gift and the scripture said that his his giving was a, was more acceptable than his brothers by faith because of his faith in God amen so as you give your seed as you sow your seed and as you give your tithe your 10% unto the Lord do it by faith knowing come on somebody knowing that this is great soil amen and you will be multiplied into your life. Amen. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. And if you want to give digitally, that information is on the screen. Amen. Lift that seed up. Father, we thank you right now. You, have, you give a seed to the sowers. You give seed to the sower. 
you give seed to the sower and if we are sowers oh god then there is a harvest that's coming into our life but we don't give to get material things we give to advance your kingdom we give to advance your kingdom we give to advance your kingdom because there are souls to be saved every penny that we give goes toward winning souls for the kingdom we don't just conjugate ourselves in here every week to look at each other but we come to celebrate the king of kings and to be witnesses of your goodness of your love and your mercy of your delivering power of your healing power oh god and we thank you oh god that everything that we give today will be received by you oh lord receive our offering receive our sacrifice and we give you all the glory and all the honor in jesus name amen amen we're going to go ahead and read. is there any announcements lady heidi 5 a.m prayer on tuesday wednesday virtual bible study 7 p.m the drama ministry you have practice in here at five o'clock um you don't have to go to the other location you will practice in here today this is your last rehearsal before easter sunday and we got a drama ministry y'all we got a and they are doing a phenomenal job they really are they are they really are so this will be their first time um you know sharing their gifts with us amen and so we thank you we 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 honor you for your obedience to that ministry amen let's stand on our feet um lady heidi please come and get us out of here amen hallelujah hallelujah we just thank god for another time in his presence amen amen hallelujah let's just let's just go before the lord in prayer lord we just thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence god we thank you for the opportunity to lift up our voices together god we thank you for meeting us here today we thank you for what you've done what you're doing we thank you for the testimonies that will come forth even from this service god i thank you for using pastor micah using minister stephen using the the, the ministers here sister shakita this, for the prayer god i thank you for the people that you've given shift global as servants for your work god i give you glory and honor for what you're doing and gonna do this week we have high expectations we're looking forward to good things happening in our lives and we give you the glory the honor and the praise for protection for prosperity and more goodness in our lives in jesus mighty name amen love on somebody hug somebody encourage somebody